Hello and welcome to the T2 Hubcast with me, James Cooper. Me, Ellie Calvin. And myself, Scott Morrison. How are we both? Very well, thank you. Okay. I am good. Yeah, I'm good. Ready to rock and roll, sprint into Christmas. Into Christmas? Christmas. Hey, you I'm not out of summer yet. I'm just watching. I'm, watch I'm, I'm sorry. We're going right the way into Christmas from now. I'm from the guy who's still now. wearing flip flops. Christmas uh, is way off. <laughs> um, and obviously, we are doing something slightly different today. That's normally where people go, ooh. ooh. All right. So, understanding that today is going to be slightly different from the original podcast that we do, it is to do with our own reflections. And obviously, from a consultancy point of view, what have been our reflections in the month of August. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, obviously, Ellie has been here for a shorter period of time. He's got to have been around, if not just a little bit more than two years. But we are going with maybe, not just this month, we could maybe touch into some of our reflections because this is the first one we've ever done. Okay. So, who would like to go first from August? What have been your sort of key reflections? And if you wanted to tap into something from a little bit further afield then we can go from there. I'm, not, I'm, I'm happy to go, but as a gen, I'm always going to offer the lady no, the first go option. For it. No okay, so when Tom threw this out to us a little while ago and said, right, we're going to do some reflections, think of a couple of areas, I, I didn't take or make any notes. So general gist for me, from this month, I think the key thing that I'm taking away or my key reflection is simply this. Do you judge a book by its cover? Okay. okay, talk to me then. So I often ask this during our um, our sessions with the, with the people, with the clients, etc., with the cohorts. And a lot of people, I think, always sort of worry about saying, yep, yeah, I do, or, you know, they think the, the actual outcomes to go, no, not me at all. And I guess socially now, the outcomes to sit there and say, no, I, I give them their time or the other person time to build or grow me in, and then I take a reflective stance on who this person is. I think we're built sometimes to form a judgment um, from past experience, be that good, bad or indifferent, you know, seeing you for the first time. If you remind me of something, I'm going to form that judgment instantly of why you remind me of that person. And if that person was negative, I'm probably going to be a defensive against you as that person because you remind me of them. I'll go into protect mode, if that makes sense. So I think we do it naturally in some ways. Um, but my reflection is slightly different. It's all of that. I've got three key areas. The first one is the longest standing friendship I've got, 42 years. I've got a work-related one and then a loosely work-related one in how Ellie has joined us. Okay. So... Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. <laughs> so, so, Ellie in the firing line. Yeah, there is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> poor, poor Ellie had the... the, the un- you know, the uncomfortable version of, of sitting with me for three days on... Poor uh, Yeah, I know, right? Poor Ellie. It was, it, listen, it was the key test. If she's five to three days, she was good to go, right? But the key thing there was, for me and Ellie, in that same, in that same, we was like thrown in the same scenario. So we're saying in the same hotel, three days, traveling together, communicating, I'm asking questions, she's asking questions. We're trying to get to know each other through a work element, but then in the same way, We've now got the social element that comes after the work in filling that time. Now it's like, how does this work? How do I project myself in a manner for a new person that I know nothing about coming into the business? So how do I represent professionally how I should be as a consultant? Okay. But then also in the space that I was in as not necessarily a mentor or a coach, but someone she's going to be observing to deliver and do a role for the business and to the to the companies that have got us in delivering these sessions. But then on the outside of that, I've also got to think, right, well, I can't be robotic in this. I've got to give her a little bit of me, like that's sharing about my family, my wife, my kids, my hobbies, my interests. We started talking about movies and then from movies to, to the scores that went with the movies into the, all sorts of different things. So we went down a few avenues. But that being said, each and every day at the end of the session or at the end of the night when I went back to my room, it was a case of, how was that today? Not so much in the professional element, but how did I make Ellie feel comfortable? Or did I overshare? Did I undershare? Was I standoffish? Was I overbearing? Did I invade their space? Was I funny? Was I not funny? Do you know what I'm saying? So my worry then, not about me forming a judgment, it was what judgment did she have of me? 
Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah. there's one view and there's a reflection there. And as we was doing this journey through, I was like, it was a constant because I found myself, I'm delivering things, but I'm conscious is in the background trying to learn from me. So am I, am I wording things correctly? Am I giving the right detail? Not just to the people who are here to hear it and to learn from it and take it forward, but also for the journey that she's now going to take with us at T2. I think that's as well for, because Ellie's obviously learning some of the content that we're, we're delivering. It's like, am I delivering that message the way that I deliver it to the people that are watching this? Or is it from a consultancy point of view, that support and guidance and help, if you like, that we offer? And I've experienced it when I joined. You've experienced it just before me. And then the same thing. Right. I, is it better each time that we've been on that journey? And I think there's a, there's a little bit of critical reflection in there. Yeah, but for you to I, say, is it right? Is it wrong? Or am I doing the right thing? Have I said the right thing or not? No, but it's not, no, it's not necessarily just that. Yes, it's that journey for her to land that the professional journey. My, my, my thoughts in this was, have I delivered the task yeah. for her to take something from on a professional level? But also as the ambassador of T2 in her first immediate stages, have I made her feel welcome? Yeah. And, and, and it's, have I done that at the right level of being professional and the right level of being social, if, if that's the right way to balance it out? So it, it, there's one thing. There's there, one way of finding that as well, though, right? Well, I'm not asking that. I'm not putting right, you on okay. that spot. <laughs> we'll, we'll come to that. <laughs> we'll come to that. Oh, God. The second part, then, in relation to this delivery, I think when we, again, judging books by our covers, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind. And, you know, when you look at what um, Professor Stephen Peters does and what he talks about in his book, Chimp Paradox, and some of the um, the sort of research he did in getting to the outcomes that he found in the book, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind when I step in front of a crowd of 10, 15, 20 people, 50% of that room have made a, that snap decision of, do I or don't I like this person? How's he dressed? How he presents himself? How he introduced himself? How he talks? How he interacts with us? Did he meet and greet me as I walked in? Has he give me eye contact? Do I just like the shape of it? it? There's a million things that can turn people on or off, move you towards or away from somebody. So I am conscious of that. But then likewise, um, and I share that with the group when we have a, a nice open group, I actually sit there and say, I know 60% of this room potentially has already said, yeah, he's not for me. And it's now up to me to, to win them back round, right? Um, but likewise, I think when we look out into the audience looking back at us, depending on that person's seeing their body language, their eye contact, the, the communication style that they're starting to create with you, we do the same thing in response, right? Because we think we've got an educated view of who this person may be before they've even spoken. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. So again, we're still in that that frame of judgment and potentially, it might be an educated guess as an example from where we sit with some of the information we know before we go into the room, but ultimately we still do it. So what I'm saying here is I, as a learning journey, just over these, these this last like couple of weeks, I've really started to take on how do I need to dial certain things down and giving people a bigger voice, uh, a, a bigger space to sort of present themselves or give them more time so that they can come out and feel comfortable in my surroundings for them to give me the best version themselves because it comes at different spaces. Okay. Now the time bit comes from the, the final point I'll make. So this weekend, myself and the family went down to Brighton and we visited a friend that is my oldest friend. We have had a friendship for now, 42 years since we were seven, right? Whatever that journey has been, whenever we're back in each other's presence, it goes back to day dot. There is no issue. The communication is open. There's trust. There's there's a relationship there. There's there's the psychological safety. Whatever he says to me is to stay with me. It's always been that way. And I think we've always had our back, each other's back like that. And the, the most poignant line he said was, you didn't see everything in my childhood. He was the one out of the full group who had everything, or from the outside looking in, had everything. He had the right clothes, he had the right trainers, he had any gadget you would need, he had the right, to, yeah, everything you would need, he had. But he also had what seemed to me on the outside looking in, the, 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 the support of the parents. I had a bus pass, which meant no one had to get off the chair when I wanted to go somewhere because I had a bus pass. I would catch two buses to go meet my friends in town. Lee would always be the one that got dropped off. Lee would always be the one that got picked up. And I was so jealous of like, God, he just gets picked up all the time. He gets dropped off all the time. He's got everything. 
But from the conversation we have, it wasn't the case of he has everything because everyone looks at things through different lenses. His view there was, but look at the freedom you had. But it's just weird how you think you know something, but one sentence can change your whole perception. So my my outlay, my biggest learning is, you know, do we judge books by, by the covers? Everyone's going to have a different answer to that. I potentially do. I like to think I don't. But in this scenario, there are three different ways. It's a reflection of how have I presented and how have I been judged, which was played on my yeah. mind. The second one was how quick was I to intercept and judge this group of people who potentially were judging me. Yeah. And then the longest relationship I've had, I had a judgment on it and it's only just changed 42 years down the line. Interesting. Very interesting. I think one of the ways to understand do you judge a book by its cover or how to uncover it is like you said, is to ask questions. So like you said with me, how, what was that experience like of judging you, judging your cover? What was that like? You, unless you won't know unless you find out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> unless you ask the questions with your friend, yeah. you've developed that level of psychological safety. So now you're exploring your childhood and asking questions and talking about it. That's the only way to dispel it. Right. Cause if not, you're just filling in the narrative and the gaps yourself of, that book cover, mm. I guess. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Um, so, again, so... <laughs> You're so welcome, James. The, no, thank you. Um, no, so lots of lots of good stuff in there. Um, it's up to you, Ellie, because I think I can sort of segue into mine, if you like, mm-hmm. um, and just sort of thing. But if you want to go first, if you can make a link to any of that, or is it something totally fresh? Yeah, no, there is definitely a link. My two reflections, so I've only been at T2 for a couple of weeks, right? Minutes. So, yeah, minutes. <laughs> uh, I'm in my infancy of T2. So um, my reflections over the past couple of weeks have been, the, the main word that comes to mind for me is authenticity. Okay. Which um, is obviously a lot of the work that T2 do. And there's consultants that we talk about. So authenticity and psychological safety. So I've observed a lot of sessions the last couple of weeks and a lot of different deliveries. And like you said, with the judging a book by its cover, I ob- observed you doing three completely different sessions with different groups of people, right? Um, and the number one thing I took from that is you were authentically yourself in every single session. However, what you said and delivered was slightly different because of the group of people that you've got in there. Now, I was reflecting on what were you doing in those sessions and for the participants, what you're actually doing is creating an environment where they felt psychologically safe. Now, that didn't necessarily mean you not being authentically yourself because it was different and you were adapting and changing, but you had to make the people in the room feel safe in order to go through the process of the training you were delivering, right? Um, and I think my reflection is the the authenticity piece and showing up of how, do, how am I walking into this business and organization and how am I going to be judged, you know, when I walk in the office and everyone goes, this is Ellie, and hi everyone, <laughs> and what judgments is everybody making? And, you know, the only way to dispel perhaps those judgments is to be a bit more vulnerable and share and tell you about my life and we discuss films and my story. And then that helps to create, because you guys have created a, a psychologically safe environment for me, I feel comfortable sharing that yeah. and opening up a little bit. So yeah, they're my two main reflections, authenticity and psychological safety. And I, th- I think even just to touch on that is that it's not a coincidence. It's it's not a coincidence. It doesn't just happen. And we've just, we've just done a reflection on the retreat from last year. And it was, it's some of the things that even we're mentioning there, it's, how quickly we do that as a, as a, as an organization if you give us 3 days fully immersed in the obviously there's a lot of planning that goes and by the way I'm not I'm not taking that away from anybody by the way but the people that get onto those retreats they do get total strangers like we've said and you get them in the room they go on the journey like you reflected on and they get the experience that we all get as well from being in that in that particular environment. And then what do we get from that? Creating teams from random people that don't know each other. They get thrown into a pressure cooker. Yeah. And the the situation is it's high challenge, but with the information we create, it's one of our says, is it? We give them high support. So high challenge, high support in a pressure cooker environment where they're taking on a lot of information in quick time. And then turning it around and putting it into practice in that same moment, whilst understanding 
I've just shared something, my vulnerabilities, my weakness, basically strengths, whichever way it might have been, with potentially 11 strangers in one room. Who I don't know. Who I don't know. And then by the end of that day, they've now gone through a, quite a slightly different journey. Well, I'm not giving too much away about the receipt, but slightly different journey to the point now they've built trust. Day one, they've built trust. Yeah. Day two now, we take them into a, a challenge versus threat scenario, facing fears, putting themselves into variables that are outside of their control where they are now having to rely on somebody else to get yeah. them through it, the team to be around them, to support them, to give them that psychological safety. Yeah. And, but they have to holistically be brave to step into that fear yeah. as well. It's, there's so many things in there, but you are right, that's short term. So I get so I get that now, Ellie. So even if even if we've got some of the conversations and it might even be as we walk for lunch or whatever, it is about well, of course we want you to be in this in this environment. We want you to be a part of the team, we want to be getting getting you on board as quickly as possible so that you can get yourself out there and then get yourself in those environments where you can measure the room and see what you see what people are doing when they react to Ellie when you walk in. Mm-hmm. Um now this ties it's quite ironic that it's all tied into the same thing because we did we honestly didn't have the conversation beforehand um my thing is the power of conversations Mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily about the planned ones which is i think why this is a really good really good aspect and thing for us to do and for us to share with people is because some of the conversations that we have sort of ad hoc in the moment i've just got off this call i've just done this and obviously not going into too much detail, but having those conversations off the back of an experience you've just been through or a piece of information you've just read or maybe even some, you've had a, a week on the road and then you've come back into the office and we do it quite a bit early, so you'll probably be in part of those, these full stories where it is, right, and where, how was that and what did you think there and did you have, how, what was that group like and how was that person or did they, did they show up how you thought they were going to show up? Mm-hmm. Whatever it was, it's the communication the conversations that i think form more of my internal narrative just to make links to you guys than any time we'd sit and go through a work con- workshop content mm-hmm. i don't necessarily think it's about actually what you see i think it's how it makes you feel mm-hmm. and the, these conversations when i say something and then you go into deep more detail or i've come to you with an idea early and even just talking through the prints or some of the psychometric tools that we use mm-hmm. And you're going through that process and it's good to get, and what do you think to this? And what do you think to this? And what do you think to this? And then I go, well, what do I think to that? Mm -hmm. So it challenges my perspective through conversation, not through an email, not through any other sort of medium. It is because I'm sat in front of you, this works and it works for me. And I get more from it than any other way of doing it Mm -hmm. for me. And so, but, and that, by the way, that's both personal and professional. So you guys will hear from me, talk about authenticity. Mm -hmm. I am that. I'm either all in or I'm all out. Mm -hmm. So some of the conversations that we've had in the past Mm -hmm. will definitely have been similar to some of the conversations I've had at home Mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Work goes home, home comes to work because that's just me. Mm -hmm. Um, Rightly or wrongly, by the way. Um, The second bit that I've put down is around sort of tweaking the language that we use so we go through, there's obviously a lot of content when you come and join T2 and when you've been working for T2, we are tweaking stuff as it, as we as we normally do every year. There's something that changes, right? Sure. There's always something that it gets added on. We've got the attributes coming in from Rich Davini. Obviously, another great thing then another another great... Uh, Everything office. evolved, right? So yeah. you can't stand still. Yeah, you don't thought still. leadership. We've got to take it to the next level. Yeah. Otherwise, what, what we bring into yeah. people, right? Yeah. Um, so that's where it starts coming. And I go, just revisit, just tweak. I don't like the word change, and if anybody that's been in some of the, my workshops, change is the, is the devil, but <laughs> it's about understanding that tweak is absolutely golden because, again, some of the language that I'm using now has changed since I've joined T2. In the last month, in the month of August, I've had to challenge myself with the language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I used to swear my head off. I don't anymore, all right? That point being that it's it's some of the detail that you need to do just to move forward and progress. Mm-hmm. And then... I've just got this, I was looking through some of the stuff from the retreat and it was uh, the interview we had with, uh, who did out his keynote, which was Professor Steve Peters. And there was just a couple of notes and I thought, I'll revisit the sort of the script of what he'd said. And there was this thing about imposter syndrome on there. 
And, he's, and, and quote, by the way, um, imposter syndrome is good. So just a reminder, imposter syndrome is good and healthy as long as you know what you're doing with it. And this got a, this again started a conversation. Started as just pressing. Well, is is it what it says it is? Is imposter syndrome the just the tagline that gets attached to people feeling a little bit stressed? Yeah, and not as comfortable in the environments. And I'd, I'd and I think that's that salient point there is if you know what you're doing with it. Mm-hmm. So if you sit and you and for me, I've sat in a couple of environments where it has felt a bit uncomfortable. But what have we done? And me and Scott shared shared one of those these environments. But understanding that, sit in it. How do you feel? Then what are you going to do with it? Are you going to keep doing the same thing over and over again, and then being in this in awkward environments? And that environment can change. But as long as you know what you're doing with it, right? I'm going to learn this from that incident, moment, meeting, conversation, whatever it is. I feel as if that's just my bit now. I'm taking that away and going. Come on, let's get let's feel awkward. Mm-hmm. Let's feel a little bit stressed. Let's feel and embrace it. Going back to challenge state mindset again. Mm-hmm. Rather than going, oh, I'm gonna be oh my god, I've got Ellie watching, she's only just joined, she's gonna judge me. It's like, come on then, Ellie, let's have a chat. Mm-hmm. Let's get let's get into the detail, let's have that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So that now I do, I'm not scared of it. Yeah. Yeah. Live in that discomfort yeah. for, for yeah. a little while longer than yeah. you would normally. And sitting there yeah. going, right, what am I getting from this? Because yeah. But there's, there's two ways to view that for me. So when we talk about imposter syndrome, that to me is the chim just ringing an alarm bell. Mm-hmm. I don't feel comfortable. I'm not set up for this. What are we doing? Get me out of here. Instantly, I've got to sit there and think, well, I don't have the option to get out of here. Mm-hmm. I'm the one who's got to stand strong and deliver or listen or be part of or support, whichever way the role is at the time. So... The next time I go into, and this is that learning and that evolving from that situation. So if I'm going into that same situation scenario for the second time, I'm thinking about, right, what's my prep? What's my learning curve? What did I expect? What delivered? What did I improve on? What can I improve on? What was the curveball in that session? So it's like that revisit, that rewind. I felt uncomfortable. What did I learn from that? What was the real part that made me feel uncomfortable? Not being ready, right? Step one, be ready. Yeah. Get yourself in order. Yeah, yeah. do you know? No, yeah, get your ducks yeah. in a row. But maybe, maybe it's pre-reading. Maybe it's asking more questions, or maybe literally, as you've done all the pre-reading, you, you've listened to everything, you've read everything you need to have, and, and in relation to the the content, you've got it down. It might be the environment you're in, because the the cohort or your social circle you're in it doesn't have to be work, but the social circle you're in is new, and there's an atmosphere. Or you can sense from the body language, it's not on the same vibe as you. So you're now thinking, well, hang on a minute, there's something here I wasn't expecting. Jim prinks up, do you know what I mean? And, and, and these, these little sensories go off, these alarms go off. So that, again, imposter syndrome, it, it, whilst that's not the same thing, but it, it's the alarm bell of where I need to be and how do I move forward with that. Yeah. And then I think I think even from a, from a point of this is the time of, of the year for a T2 where we do get a bit of time to decompress, re, regroup, go again. Even though we have been busy mm-hmm. and it, there never seems to be a quiet, yeah, a quiet it's a time. seasonal slower time. It's, it's a slightly slower in way of working at the moment rather than just go deliver, deliver, deliver. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's been one of the reflections from August specifically is that there is times where you need to just bring it down a peg get your ducks in a row, get yourself sorted, get ready to go again, and then you're fully ready to smash the next the next month and hopefully we'll see that in the, in the September reflections. Um, but understanding that if there is something that we can take away from that, it is that, yeah, you, you need to have that recharge, go again type yeah, of process. Yeah, reset. Yeah, I think, and you got, you've, you've obviously been on holiday Ellie's been obviously just joined, so she probably went on a holiday. And then I'm going away this weekend, so... Where are you going on your holiday? I'm going to Mallorca. Not what? going to Magaluf, though. What do you plan on doing? Cala Dior. I'm, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> Absolutely Is this the decompression we're talking about? This is the decompression. Me, horizontal, Reset. with a beer in my hand, and a good book. And reflecting on... What book are you reading? Oh, here we go. <laughs> what book are you reading? Next time, as well, you could reflect 
Right, so all right, oh, so yeah. we've got oh, here. We go. Like dude, this is getting deeper. This. <laughs> right, so I'm reading um, "My Stroke of Insight" by Jill Bolt, Bolt with an E Taylor. Okay, excellent. You two reading any good books? I'm currently strolling my way through. I am human. Pain and pleasure. Oh, um, Martin Johnson's. Martin, CEO yeah, founder. Martin Johnson, CEO, no but not that intended. Martin Johnson. <laughs> but. No, on a serious level, I'm I'm sort of working with Martin on certain other whole casting relations to sort of talking him through the chapters as we put yeah. it down on the on on the audio. But for me, the the journey so far is fantastic because it's really got me like opening communication, not only just thinking about it at work and how that lands, but viewing my children, my relationship, my children, my wife, how are we doing this. And it just, it's, it's Bob on it. It just makes so much sense to me. I won't get into it now because there's another, there's another channel in which we're delivering that. But yeah, yeah very good so far. Okay. Elle, any books? I'm reading Martin's book, yeah. I Am Human. And I'm also reading a book called Of Boys and Men. It's by a guy called Richard Reeves. Um, and he's talking about the role of gender and the role of men in modern society and unconscious motivators from a male's perspective. It's super interesting. Really? No, I listen to a few podcasts on things like this where we, we, we talk about the, the split between uh, male and female and, and the social standings and the perceptions or expectations from both both sides. And I, I, I do, I get a bit like, yeah, 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 what did you say, what did you say, and I do, but it's crazy because we have, personally, I won't go into it, but we've changed so much. There's, there is a big a big standing in there and, and the roles we have now. And again, this falls back into pain and pleasure from Martin's book, you know, from being that provider, that hunter-gatherer, to being mm-hmm. dad, husband, brother, yeah. um, nephew, son, coach, mm-hmm. mentor, all of these things, it's definitely... Oh. Like product placement? Yeah, sorry, faulty... <laughs> product placement here but no but the general gist is there are so many different expectations now so we've gone from one or two roles to potentially 10 15 and so much more what does that mean and as a result of that we talk about being authentic and displaying emotions and being vulnerable at the right times and feeling safe in doing so but who's judging us on that scenario and how does that work within relationships of the modern day woman and how that modern day woman's evolved it's a big old topic it. Brilliant. And book review coming. <laughs> we'll do book club. <laughs> um, so, a couple of things. Any, have you got anything else to add, guys? Are we all good? I was just going to add about that when you said about the recalibration or taking that time to kind of settle, I think, and I've been looking into it around learning. Obviously, I'm, the last couple of weeks, I've got a lot of information that's bouncing around my brain. Um, and there's loads of research around neurons and how what's happening it's like a little factory in there and they're all kind of running around yeah. working when when you're learning and that's where the authenticity authenticity piece comes in for me at t2 is because everyone does what they say on the tin you know everyone is always researching learning if there's a new topic mm. imposter syndrome we went down a rabbit hole of the definition of the word syndrome and why is it a syndrome and all of this just you know a couple of hours ago so everybody lives and breathes what they say about that learning journey and dives into topics. Now with that, thinking takes a lot of energy and, and you know, it takes oh, a lot yeah. of tiredness at the end of the day. You yeah. think, oh my goodness, when you've been reading a book or when you've been learning about a new subject, you can feel quite tired at the end of the day. So that recalibration and that taking that downtime to reset is super important to get that energy back up to go again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just a little bit on the, the energy piece there for me around whilst you're learning and absorbing this information. Or even, like you said, with conversations, taking a topic and, and talking it out with somebody in that energy exchange of a, a human in front of you in real life. Afterwards, you can need that, sometimes need a bit of a five minutes to go, oh, okay, Whew, just let that settle in yeah. now, breathe a little bit. Completely agree with that. You can read something, you can, you know, you can listen to something, but the the debate, the conversation, the, the two-way exchange of ideas and even the even the the temperament or the the heat the passion in which it's delivered can really sway me in why that would be delivered a certain way or why that information is impactful and powerful. So I I'm very similar to that. I um, I think when I went through my learning journey, I explained this to you. It's all it's okay reading these things and hearing these things, but you, there's no substitute for witnessing it for me. 
and, and observing and, and making your own notes and really viewing where that bit sits with you, where that lands. So then you start to create your own narrative, your own key points as it lands through. Uh, you're going to go through the next couple of months watching seven, eight different people deliver the same thing in seven, eight completely different ways. Some will cross over, some won't. But ultimately within that journey, we're talking about authenticity here. You'll probably sit there and go, love that from Spence. I'll take that. Love that from James. B delivered that. I'll take that. T goes into this level of detail. I'll take that. Scott sits there and says, right, what do you, you know, I'll take that. Martin's freelance and going off on his own merry way. I'll take that. <laughs> you know, and everybody within that journey, you'll take something from. But you've already, with your experience, with your knowledge of what you've been doing before coming into T2, you've already got the basis of what you're doing. All I would ever say is, it's just a slight rebranding. That's all it is. It's a slight rebranding. A lot of the stuff you know, you've got it in, it's in there, but it's how we rebrand it. And I, and I think you, you'll, you'll smash it when you get into the flow of it. So, first one, first reflection podcast. Um, hopefully we've, 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 Met the brief and we're we're ready to go and we've done we've done enough as as far as detail and um, obviously we will reflect on this as a <laughs> as a collective as well. So well done everybody, well done Ellie, well done Scott, thank you and James. Well done, James. Over to everybody else, open your minds to your reflections, guys. Let us know what you think and we will see you on the next T Two Hubcast. <laughs> <laughs>